Hello everyone and welcome to this third diving physiology lecture. In this lecture I'm going to be presenting two fundamental and key concepts of diving physiology which is the concept of the oxygen store and the concept of aerobic dive limit. Starting with the oxygen store, the concept is very simple. It accounts or it stands for the amount of oxygen an animal is able to keep in the body, which is a crucial ability in order to sustain metabolism underwater, those animals that dive. What we have in this table is exactly that, an account of how much oxygen per kilogram of tissue an animal is able to store. And in here we have, of course, some animals that are particularly exceptional in that respect. You see the elephant seal with 97 milliliters of oxygen per kilo, the weddell seal close to 90, the sperm whale 77. This is a full range of aquatic species, starting from smaller sea otters or harbor seals, all the way to the 10-ton sperm whale, or the elephant seals up to 400 kilograms. No matter what, when normalized for body mass, notice that these three species I mentioned before get close to 100 milliliters of oxygen per kilo, while, for example, the manatee, the sea cows, which are not particularly exceptional divers because they live in the water but in rather shallow waters and they don't do long uh, dives, only have about 20, 21 milliliters of oxygen per kilo, which is relatively close to what is measured in humans, between 20 and 30 milliliters of oxygen per kilo. So first of all, diving mammals, those that are able to dive longer, can store larger amounts of oxygen in their bodies. The second aspect important, where is this oxygen stored? Essentially, there are three locations for oxygen storage in the body, in the lungs, in the form of oxygen gas or air, in the blood, where oxygen is bound to hemoglobin, the respiratory pigment that transports oxygen around, or in the muscles, where oxygen is bound to myoglobin, which is a similar pigment found there. If you look at this table, you quickly will realize that those animals with the highest storage of oxygen in their bodies are the ones that actually have depend less or have less amount of oxygen in their lungs, below 10%. Instead, these diving, these deep divers, these proper divers are a storing their are storing oxygen in their blood. We will see later how, but essentially here 70, 66 to 71 percent of the total oxygen storage is allocated, is found in the blood. Also important, the amount in the muscle accounting for 25 to 30 percent of the oxygen is stored in the muscles. This data basically shows exactly the same thing, just in a different format. We look at the bar diagram on the left first, comparing the true divers, the ones with the highest amount of oxygen storage, close to 100 milliliters of oxygen per kilo, compared with humans, in which the storage is, as I said, between 20 and 30, in this case it will be 27 roughly. And then we have two divers, sea lions, fur seals, are true divers, but they do not reach the same capability of performance that these ones over here. And in different colors you have the oxygen stores. The lungs in the first place in blue, notice that the amount of oxygen proportionally in the true divers in the lungs is much less, much more in the blood and also important in the muscles. Finally, in the cartoon figure here, you have exactly the same information, just in parentheses you have the amount of the lung, the blood and the muscle for different species. The outcome, essentially, the outcome is that the, for, for, for proper true divers, the amount of oxygen stored in the lungs is small. And this is because the lungs while diving pose a problem. This will be the subject of lecture number five of this series, which you can actually look after this one. 
what is it that determines these oxygen stores? Obviously, it must be related with the uh, pigments that are storing this oxygen. And that's what you see here. In this table, you're presenting several different variables that account for the ability to store oxygen. The two most important ones when we look at the blood compartment per se is one, of course, how much total blood volume there is. That's what you have in this column, the blood volume. And notice immediately that those species that I highlighted earlier, sperm whales, elephant seals, weevil seals, are always above 200, 200 milliliters per kilo of blood. The amount of blood these animals have is much higher than other animals like the manatees or sea otters, for example, less than a half. Equally important is the amount of hemoglobin, the amount of blood, the amount of hemoglobin, the concentration of hemoglobin in the blood, which again in the true divers it is higher, considerably higher than in the other mammals. So this is accounting for the ability to store more oxygen in the blood. More blood in the first place, higher concentration of hemoglobin. What happens in the muscle? In the muscle you also see a consistent increase in myoglobin concentration in those true divers, reaching between 5.5 and even more than 6 grams of myoglobin per 100 grams of tissue. And this is actually a topic that will be discussed in lecture number 7 in this series, looking at the evolutionary aspects of myoglobin concentration in muscles. This is also a lecture I invite you to look after, to, to check out after this one. Mm -hmm. Right? In terms of blood storage, one important detail is that we know well that blood volume actually scales isometrically to body mass. That means that in mammals, for example, if we take mammalian species and we put in this graph for their body mass how much blood volume they have, most mammalian species would fall in this line. And because these are logarithmic scales, this line has is the type of is a function of this type, in which the allometric exponent is close to one, and that is called an isometric relationship. That is a norm that is true for most mammalian species. It's true for humans as well. In this graph here you have this dot, this big circle, which stands for humans, just on the spot on this line. What is shown in this graph with these small dots here is actually data for Weddell seals. And what you see is that Weddell seals deviate consistently from other mammalian species. This simply makes up the point that I already stated. In true divers like seals, like Weddell seals, the amount of blood is much higher than what would be expected for a mammal, which is associated and related with the capability these animals have for diving. This deviation is consistent. And even if in this graph it would seem that this is a small, notice that this is a logarithmic scale which magnifies this change. All right, that's it for oxygen storage. Let's look into the concept of aerobic dive limit. The aerobic dive limit has to do with the, metabolic, with the metabolism, with the use of energy by the animal during diving. It's well represented in this graph here, which I'm going to try to explain. In the x-axis, you have the dive duration in minutes, from 0 to 70 minutes, it's about an hour here, 60 and plotted against the concentration of lactate in the blood. Why lactate? Lactate is well known a product of anaerobic metabolism. This is the, the metabolism when oxygen is not present. In most situations, normally, pyruvate glucose will be metabolized to pyruvate and pyruvate through glycolysis will be incorporated in the citric acid cycle. In the absence of oxygen, this is not possible. And instead, pyruvate is converted into lactate. That's what we call anaerobic metabolism. 
Therefore, the concentration of lactate in the blood is informing us when the animal has run out of oxygen. For the Weddell seal here, this essentially happens about after 20 minutes. 22 is the considered time for Weddell seals. And this is what we call the aerobic dive limit. It's the limiting time for a dive of aerobic nature. After 22 minutes, we understand that this animal has no longer enough oxygen and is starting to produce energy, ATP, anaerobically, because lactate is starting to accumulate in the tissues. The aerobic dive limit will vary between species and it will be highly dependent on the capability to store of oxygen for two weather seals about 20 minutes. If now we do a study of what is the behavior of Weddell seals in nature, in normal, well, in wild conditions, we can report, for example, it's been reported, the data from more than 1,000 dives by six different individuals. What you see in this graph is that most dives tend to be short. Most dives tend to be below the aerobic dive limit. If we set the limit at 20, we can account for how much. Essentially, this would be 6%. This would be 18. That's 24. 24 plus 22, it's 46. 46 plus 40 would be about 26, 86% of the dives. Sorry, 86% of the dives which are within the aerobic dive limit. These animals are diving without accumulating lactate. They are obviously able to dive anaerobically. And that may have advantages in some conditions. For example, when foraging underwater, perhaps the animal wants to stay, desires to stay longer because it, it wants to catch some prey. But most of the dives anyway are actually below the aerobic dive limit. And this is something that will be the theme of the next lecture in which we are going to be looking at data obtained in diving animals in wild conditions. But that's it for this lecture now. Just time for questions. Thank you very much for listening.